Seeking new partners, Chinese President Xi Jinping is set to go on a tour to Saudi Arabia for a Chinese Arab summit with the bolstering of strategic partnerships on the discussion agenda. The visit comes amid relations between both countries and the U.S. souring over oil production and the influence in the Middle East. RT's Rachel Blevins takes us through the details. A key strategic partnership in the growing multipolar world stands to get even stronger as Chinese President Xi Jinping visits Saudi Arabia for the first time in six years. While it may be a short trip, there is a lot at stake, with reports noting that the plan is to sign off on nearly $30 billion worth of agreements between the two countries. While China is Saudi Arabia's largest trading partner with bilateral trade nearing $90 billion last year, we can't forget about the geopolitical significance here, which is why this summit has attracted so much attention. See, Beijing is going into this visit, emphasizing its desire to continue to work with Arab countries and citing their shared respect for sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity, mutual non-aggression, and most importantly, non-interference in each other's internal affairs. China has always believed that there is no such thing as a power vacuum in the Middle East and that the people of the Middle East are the masters of the future and destiny of the region. China has always played a constructive role in the region and never seeks any geopolitical self-interest. And while they don't mention a country like the United States by name, it's no coincidence that this summit comes just five months after Joe Biden made a visit of his own to Saudi Arabia, where he specifically voiced concerns about leaving a power vacuum in the Middle East that could be filled by a country like China. Let me state clearly that the United States is going to remain an active, engaged partner in the Middle East. We will not walk away and leave a vacuum to be filled by China, Russia, or Iran will seek to build on this moment with active principal American leadership. And Riyadh appears to be just fine with finding new allies amid continued tensions with Washington, with South Africa's president even suggesting the Gulf Kingdom is considering joining the BRICS alliance, which would bring it even closer to both China and its key partner, Russia. Speaking of oil, it's also likely to be on the agenda as Riata is Beijing's top supplier of crude. As for reports earlier this year that Saudi Arabia was considering accepting payments in yuan, well, if that does happen, it would mark the first time the country turns away from the petrodollar in nearly 50 years. But rather than turning the Saudis into a, quote, pariah, as he once promised, Joe Biden continues to promise consequences that never seem to come to pass going to be some consequences for what they've done with Russia. What kind of consequences? Menendez says suspend all arms sales. Is that something you'd consider? I'm not going to get into what I'd consider and what I have in mind, but there will be, there will be consequences. So I, I do see it as a deliberately hostile act, and, and wh why would we have troops defending a country that, that behaves this way towards us? It would expose them. But, but again, that's, that's mm -hmm. what they should be thinking about the next time they decide to hurt the United States of America and our allies. For years, we have looked the other way as Saudi Arabia For has decades. chopped up journalists, yeah. has engaged in massive political repression. For one reason, we wanted to know that when the chips were down, when there was a global crisis, I just think it's time to admit that the Saudis are not looking out for us. It appears that in the same way Saudi Arabia chose to increase its ties with Russia amid warnings from the U.S. to do the opposite, it's now following a similar path in its relationship with China. See, this week's summit is yet another sign that the multipolar world isn't just coming, it's already here. Going Underground show host Afshin Ratanzi says the upcoming summit could be a significant step towards a multipolar world. Is it the most important meeting of the century so far? Uh, perhaps it is in the context of a war in the heart of Europe and the fact that Saudi Arabia reportedly refuses to answer Joe Biden's phone calls when it comes to oil production. The idea that he is meeting with Xi Jinping amidst an environment where uh, uh, Joe Biden seeks to sanction Chinese industry and continues to ramp up the numbers of soldiers surrounding China in a myriad other bases. So uh, the significance cannot be uh, underestimated 
in in that context of the widening of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the widening of BRICS. There's no doubt that the uh, top readout from this summit will be the multipolar world, the drifting away of power from Western nations and the decline of the U.S. empire. Whether it will be seen in future years as a true marker of the transformational change that so many have been expecting will depend on whether the United States sabotages it by any means necessary. That's what they've done in the past, and uh, it'll be the secret services, the military-industrial complex, the weapons companies and lobbyists. What will they say after this meeting? Will they even start to realize, let's make money, let's help the climate, let's ignore this idea that the Washington hegemonic project must be saved at all costs when it is now doomed to failure?